Savan asked me before for Vito Virkes before my arrest. I cannot say I met him in Croatian community. I only remember I met him at uh, 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 Central Police Station. I saw them practically the day after they were arrested. I went straight out of Long Bay Jail and I had to sit down in a conference with them and they didn't know each other. They were asking each other, who is this chap? Who is that chap? Who is the other chap? They didn't know who, they, especially the two from Lithgow, they hadn't a clue who they were. So the notion that this conspiracy had occurred, did that seem likely to you? Impossible. Following the arrests of Verkez and Bebic in Lithgow, police moved in on the Sydney addresses of the other men. Again, it was a tidy operation involving Sydney's more heavyweight officers from the special breaking and armed hold-up squads. Between 9.55 and 10.15 on the evening of February 8, they raided three separate addresses in Sydney's western suburbs, arresting Anton Zviritic, Vik Brajkovic and Ilya Kokotovic. Along with these three men, they also arrested Joseph Kokotovic and Mili Nekic, even though neither was mentioned in any of Verkez's original statements. One of them told me, Mili, you are under arrest. I said, uh, you are joking. He said, what are you joking about? What for I'm arrest? I said, no, we find some explosive to your place. He said, rubbish, it's not true. You didn't find nothing. And one of them said, not to worry, Millie. Your son will be married when you realize from jail. You'll, you'll be going there for 15 years. I, also, I was, that time, just, I think it's the joke. I was smiling, you know, I didn't take serious. But after some time, I was handcuffed and escorted by detectives to Central Police Station. From Brajkovic's home, police said they seized a package like this. There were two half sticks of gelignite, electronic components, seven detonators, and a clock. From the home of Ante Zviritic, they found two more half sticks of gelignite, a detonator, and yet another clock. From the Kokotovic household, they found yet another two half sticks of gelignite and four detonators. At the trial, police were questioned about their discoveries in an attempt, as one judge later noted, to suggest that their evidence as to what was found disclosed a suspicious resemblance. The truth is that uh, to support their conviction, they have to fabricate evidence because they, they, they did not find any explosives, not in my place, not in place, any one of the people that I accused, that I know. As well as that denial by Brajkovic in court, the Kokotovic's, Nekic and Zviritic also denied in court that explosives were found on their premises. And they weren't the only ones. At the committal hearing, police alleged they recovered another similar cash from another man, Joseph Stipic. But Stipic survived the charge for this reason. What happened was this. He was charged with being in possession of these explosives, and they were alleged to have been found in a drawer in his desk, in his room. He was a student, so he had a desk in his room. In his desk, he's supposed to have a drawer. In the drawer, he's supposed to have all these things for making explosives. So one policeman after the other went in the box and they all said, oh yes, I went there, I looked in the drawer and there was these explosives there, yes, I counted them out, yes, there were so many detonators and so many bits of wire and so forth. Oh yes, which drawer did you get it out of? That drawer there, definitely that drawer, yes, definitely that drawer, and on it went. And uh, until we uh, called our evidence, and it turned out there was no drawers because there was no desk. There was an old kitchen table which he'd been studying on. Being no desk, there was no drawers. Being no drawers, there was no explosives. That's eventually how it went. Of the confessions obtained by police, only Bebich's was signed, but he later withdrew the confession with the following claim to the court. One policeman used like uh, electricity cable and hit me and said uh, another policeman said, give a uh, pen for him and signed. And another policeman went in another bedroom and room on police station, bring the gun, shotgun, and said, if you know sign that some blast your whole body and some blast you, 
Miss Shodgan, I've been very scared. And I sign. I didn't sign nothing. In court, all the other men insisted that their unsigned confessions were also fabricated. In one stage, they bring, uh, bring blank paper and uh, ask me to sign on the bottom. And I refused to sign it. <clears throat> in, one, uh, uh, in one stage, I was semi-conscious of when they pushed me third time. And uh, one of the detectives, I come out uh, from unconscious side. Uh, leave him a bloody alone. He doesn't know anything. Stop, stop torturing him. I can't stand it any longer. One, one of their colleagues said that. I was surprised because no one told me about police verbal here in Australia. I knew it. You can be arrested in verbal in communist system, totalitarian system, but not here in Australia. And I was very surprised and one way very sho shocked. What's happened? Despite that evidence, the confessions were accepted, except in the case of Vic Brajkovic. Evidence was presented in court to support his story that he'd been bashed. Uh, they were for just for some while, and uh, they just persisted. And I, and I, as I couldn't say, I, I think at one, one stage I lost consciousness. And I, I, I didn't know actually what's happened. I was all wet. And, uh, uh, my hair was everywhere and uh, I, I feel pain in the chest and I, because they hit me with the, the foot shoes up there in the chest. My, my face was all swollen and uh, actually it was a bewildering situation, you know. I saw Vic, uh, Vic Brakovich on the morning after, the morning out of the, the jail, I think it was a Sunday morning. And uh, he's a very tough guy, Vic Brakovich, and he doesn't like to show anything, but he was quite clearly showing signs of bruising around the face. His head was hurting, he said, and um, he had pains in his uh, chest. He wasn't showing that. I was just asking that. And I could see the marks on his face. So did you think he'd been bashed? Oh, yeah. Police also claimed they uncovered an assassination plot on two influential figures in the Croatian community. One was newspaper editor Fabian Lavokovic. Did you believe you were a target? No, never. Never, because I knew those uh, uh, six uh, chaps who were uh, uh, involved in uh, alleged uh, conspiracy, and um, even if they, if anybody would have uh, had any idea of um, uh, uh, doing anything against me, they could have done it. But deep in my heart, I uh, never believed that they would do any harm to me. The principal informant in the Croatian Six case was the seventh man. Vico Verquez. Verquez was tried separately, pleaded guilty, and was sentenced to two years and four months imprisonment. The committal and trial of the other six lasted an expensive 303 sitting days. High security surrounded the proceedings. In the end, all six were convicted and each sentenced to 15 years jail. The Croatian Six case has parallels with the various Anandamaga trials which followed the 1978 Hilton bombing incident. After a decade of court battles of his own and seven years of jail,